All right, so um, today we're going to look at a new new section of our chapter four. We're going to look at um, where we have a distributed loading in our analysis. Previously, what we have is um, all the focus load uh, in our system. For example, this uh, tutorial question, right? So we have a focus load on the beam itself. So today we'll look at what happens if you have a distributed load on this structure. Yeah. Okay. So this is a distributed load given by a unit of Newton over meter and a small W. Yeah, small W. And we will develop some equation first, general equation, and then we will we will apply that uh, equation. So this beam is having a length of L and you can see that the boundary condition or the constraint of uh, this structure, both end is built inside the wall. Yeah. So we have a fixed end uh, reaction over here for the photo or for the picture that you see on the screen here. So if you do the reaction analysis, structural analysis theory, uh, like what we did uh, uh, or you, what you learn in your static and dynamics, uh, you will able to draw uh, from what you see here, distributed load on a beam with the length of L, you're able to transform it into a reaction load on the left with this WL divided by two. On the right will be WL divided by two and it's pointing up. And then on the on the left hand side, you have a moment, which is a big capital M moment. In this case, we have a positive uh, anticlockwise direction, WL squared divided by 12. On the right hand side, we will have a negative M equal to WL squared divided by 12. All right, so negative when I say negative M, because we assume that uh, all our direction of our moment is anticlockwise, yeah? But if you draw in the, the free body diagram, um, when you correct the direction, then the negative sign will be disappeared, yeah? All right. All right, the next one, right? So, um, Basically, for distributed loading uh, for this chapter or for this module, you can always refer to Appendix D. Uh, there's a table there to for to help you, right? So for this for this uh, module or chapter four, you don't need to memorize uh, all the all the moment and reaction force, right? What you need to do is you 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 just refer to Appendix D in the Moodle. Right? So you just download the appendix D and then you refer it according to the case. All right. So let's look at one example, how we use the appendix D to help us to analyze our problems. So let's say we have a beam that we have a, a, a roller pin on the left hand side and there's a, a support yeah, a support on the right hand side. And on this beam, we have a few node there. We have node one, two, three, and four. The length of this beam uh, will be uh, point two and three will be L. And the distributed load is from point two to point three. So in this case, if you look at your support, yeah, the roller pin, the roller support on the left, and your um, support at point number three here, you can uh, draw them in the form of the photo that you see on the screen here. All right. 
So you, you can convert the distributed load, the reaction force, yeah? we'll talk about reaction force. Um, we can convert the effect under the W, the distributed load here, into WL divided by 2, and there's a moment for the left-hand side support and right-hand side support. All right? Both give in uh, WL squared divided by 12. Then the next one will be um, another method of analysis where you convert the distributed load into all this form when you look at uh, all the nodes on the beam here, right? So just now, the, the picture just now only look at the support, yeah? only look at the support. Another method is that you look at all the points, point one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, yeah? So, and then there is, uh, you convert the distributed load W into a fo focus load, all right? You, ha you have one, two, three focus load here, and then with all the moment, yeah? And for the analysis, for the convenience of analysis, uh, point number five extra point in the middle here was added because we convert the distributed load into a focus load. Yeah? So this kind of skill you learn in your static or dynamic class right, to convert distributed load into a focus load. Okay. We will look at one tutorial question right, to to apply or to recall what you have learned. Yeah? The next thing that we learned this morning, um, just now what we uh, learned is about distributed loading and uh, how we convert it into the moment and the focus load. Right? The next thing for today is that work equivalent method where we will use a work equivalent method to displace the distributed load, all right? So as you can see on the screen here, on the left-hand side, we have a distributed load which is not uniform, yeah? Which is not uniform. Just now, this one, the photo that you see on the screen here, this is a uniform distributed load where from two to three, the load distributed evenly. However, when you have a scenario when the distributed load is nonlinear, where you can see from this point to this point is you have a sinusoidal uh, distributed load here. You can convert by using work equivalent method, you can convert the left hand side diagram into right hand side diagram. Right, right hand side diagram, you will see uh, your small f with this your local force at point one, and then your moment, your rotation, and your shear loading, yeah? or displacement in Y, V1 is displacement in point one. Yeah, so uh, remember, we still, we still in uh, chapter four, where we look at beam. So we, in beam, we have four unknown that we, we, we always need to solve the force, the vertical displacement, rotation, and the moment. Okay. All right, so let's see uh, anything about the work equivalent method. All right, so we're going to convert the photo on the left into the photo on the right, right? The photo on the, on the, on the left here what what is different from the previous uh, chapter or previous section is you see the side the the sim the the load we have here is a distributed load and is uneven yeah and the right hand side uh, at this moment you're already familiar with all the f v m and uh, rotation side yeah? so let's look at what is work right so work distributed from point one to point two, given by this equation, all right? So 
when we take the W, WX means your distributed load is in the function of X. It is it will change according to X direction. So it is W and then there is a X sign here. So we have two terms here. One is your W, one is your V. Huh? V is your uh, vertical displacement here and times the dx. So it's a x, then you'll get the work done by the, the, the load. Yeah? Work, the definition of work, we take our weight here, right? Distributed weight, a loading. F, our force, times the displacement, times the the distance traveled by this uh, distributed load, right? So you have three terms here. Eh? So uh, just recall what is work. Yeah, work consists of three terms. One is your work. Uh, not work. One is your distributed loading, W. One is your vertical displacement V, and then your x distance. Yeah. So this formula is important and is uh, your first equation for today. W distributed and it's a capital W. The worker, it represent work equal to this equation. All right. So the work due to discrete nodal force is given by this equation. Yeah. So we have two work here. One, the first equation you see here, the first equation you see on the screen here, if you calculating the work because of the distributed load, well, you need to use the first equation. If you analyze the work due to the nodal, uh, nodal point here, nodal force, the small f and the rotation at the point here, then you need to use the second equation over here, right? So we have capital W, which is work uh, sub-distributed, and capital W sub-discrete. So sub-discrete, you take moment at point one times the rotation point one plus moment point two times the rotation point two plus the force point one times the vertical displacement plus force two times the vertical displacement, right? So we have two equation today up to this stage. Yeah. After that, we combine the concept of these two our work done due to distributed load will equal to work done on the node here. So the first equation will equal to second equation. When we combine, we will get the third equation. Yeah. So we are, we are in chapter four. We talk about work equivalent method to analyze a distributed uh, loading. Yeah. So we arrive at three equation now. First equation, second equation and third equation. Then when you combine, we're able to find the uh, unknown inside the, uh, the, the, the structure here. Yeah. So we will look at how we solve here, yeah? how we solve. So we have two diagram on the screen here. On the left, you will see a distributed loading with this W, uniformly distributed load with point one and point two with a length of L. And then we can use the free body diagram of this beam to do analysis, to do our analysis here. So um, if you have a distributed load like what you see on the screen here on the left hand side, you can convert the diagram from the left 
to the right, like what you see on the screen here. So the force is going up at point one and the vertical displacement is going up also. And then we have an anticlockwise moment at one, rotation at one, both anticlockwise. And then to counter, to counter balance, or we call it couple reaction, um, you have your uh, moment at point two, reaction two, force and uh, displacement. Yeah, same. Let's see how we convert. Yeah. So the example here, there is no, there is no uh, support there. We only look at the pin. Yeah? We only look at the pin. So use back the, the equation that we learned just now. The work, work, uh, work distributed equal to work discrete. Distributed is a bigger picture. Discrete is what happened in the node there. Then we can find all the unknown, yeah? So today you have three equations. First, second, and third, yeah? So recall the two equations just now. So well, uh, your weight, uh, work distributed equal to integration of your load, your vertical displacement, and the distance travel or the length of the beam. Work done by discrete dimension will be the products of moment, rotation, and force and vertical displacement. You put them together, you will see the equation on the screen here. Left hand side equal to right hand side. So we have to understand what does it mean by the term that you write in the equation. The moment, no moment, uh, yeah, moment at point one times rotation one. What does it mean? It means that this is the work done due to the concentrated normal moment, right? This is on the on the on the point itself, on the station one itself. What happened to the work? The green color. I I make some color here. So F times the, uh, the vertical displacement is the work done by the force. So the first two term is the work done by the moment. The, the, the third and fourth term here is the work done by the force. So you look, you're looking at moment and force and then how they convert into uh, the work in the system. Yeah. So try to recognize what does all these term means when you write them in uh, your answer. Right. So so far all these are information. All right. The important concept for this morning uh, will be um, this equation. Yeah. The work distributed will equal to work discrete. Then this one, uh, it will come automatic, right? So from the diagram that we see here, your distributed load, which is this one, because it's going down, we can write as negative small w. Yeah, we have a negative because it's going down. And recall, when we learn about beam, there is a vertical displacement equation, which is the one that you see on the screen here. This lengthy equation, where I give you the um, the shape function. All right. So you need to recall all this from the previous section, and then you continue with the derivation. So when you write the work distributed with integration of your from zero to L, you take the loading times the vertical displacement times the length of the beam. You can write 
something like this on your uh, answer yeah so um, when you okay hold on now okay, I think I did the wrong arrangement here all right so the first one Um, okay, let me do it slowly. So on the on the right hand side, you just copy what you have from the second equation here, equal to m1 times the rotation one. You will get negative wl2 times v1 minus v2. This one you you get from uh, this equation, yeah. So we are only look at uh, we are expanding we're expanding the, the equation on the left here because equation on the left here we take the w times the vertical displacement all right and then uh, what we have so if you if you take your w we know that wx wx is the uh, distributed load in the x function equal to negative w so you replace negative w this one with negative w and then your vertical displacement vertical displacement in x given by this equation yeah so if you forget what is this again go back to the previous slides right to see what is how we derive this one yeah so you take the first one this one two l and so on you times the W, you will get all these terms there. So there's a there's a calculation step there. You take this lengthy equation times this one, and then you uh, you do the 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 calculation. Yeah. You get all these terms. Yeah. You get all these terms after you do the 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 integration steps. Yeah. You'll get the blue color answer. So I think I will show you how you get the answer. Yeah. Yeah. I think the previous one I show you how to how to get it. So um, if you take the first one, if you take the first one, this one, if you integrate, if you integrate zero to l, and then you take the v. The v, the first term of your v, is two divided by l cube v minus v two times the because uh, for the first term here you have x power three here. You 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 carry you carry the first term with the x power three, which is your v times the w. So w is negative negative w times the vertical displacement which is you take the first one first you take the first one times the x yeah times the x power 3 so you get negative 2w divided by l cube times the v1 minus v2 x cube dx yeah then you do the integration steps you'll get something like this on the screen here all right so if you integrate with x, so you, you focus on x, so x power 3 will become x power 4 divided by 4, and then you integrate with 0 to l, you arrive at negative 2 w l cube v1 minus v2 l4 minus 4. So you get the first term. So that's why from the first one, if you if you uh, summarize or you simplify the equation you have here because you cancel 2 to 4 you get 2 the let me draw something if you cancel 2 you get 2 you cancel the l you only get l here so from from this one you get the first term of your equation you repeat the same for this term this term, this term, this term, and this term. 
you will get the answer on the screen. Any question so far? Ask me, yeah? If not, I'm going to ask you to explain, yeah? Any step that you don't understand? Dr. Na, you understand? Yes, a little bit on the integration. All right. So do you guys uh, understand how you get this one? Who don't understand? Who don't understand? This integration is, is with respect to air, right? Again? What, yeah. what do you mean? Again, uh, repeat your question. The integration. Mm. Is it with uh, with respect to L? To L. Okay. Uh, let me try it here first. Singi, you understand how you arrive at this equation? I understand. Understand. Eh? La, you understand? Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to repeat one more time for how to get this one. All right. Okay. If you look at this. If you look at this integration uh, mathematic model on the right hand side, on the left hand side, your W function, your distributed load function equal to negative W. Now, why you, why we have our our distributed load equal to negative W? Why there is a negative there? Uh, because if you if you make it the point load, then it will be in the opposite side. What is the direction of your distributed load? It's negative. Yeah, where where does it pointing? It's going. It's pointing up. Ne uh, negative y axis. Yeah, so that's why we have a negative. Yeah. Then, uh, the second equation here is your. Uh, vertical displacement where we derive from a beam structure that we cover in the previous chapter. All right. So, Katana, you remember? Do you remember this this one? You've seen this equation before? Yes. All right. So, if you look at the right hand side, you re you you just recap what you learned from the left hand side here. So this one is negative w here this one is what you see on the left hand side here so we need to integrate these two so how do we process this information we take the first one first because we have one two three four five six there so um we're not going to spend time to derive all this, all right? You have to do it in your own homework time. So I'll show you how we get the first one. So I take the first one. So the first term is, if you take this one, remember that you have an x power 3 behind there. So your v equal to 2L, uh, 2 divided by L cubed times v1 minus v2 times the x3 then because you are you have a w in the equation here you times your negative w inside inside this equation you have negative 2 w minus l cube times v1 minus v2 x cube dx katana you understand how you get this one yes okay then the rest is just uh integration steps yeah those if you are weak in integration, you need to polish up your 
integration and differentiation skill. Eh? Um, because as you can see from the first chapter until now, we always look at integration and inter uh, differentiation. All right, so the rest I'm not going to explain because all these are mathematic steps. You just uh, integrate from zero to L by looking at X component. Then you set it up. I did it, sir. I did it. All right. All right. Then you do it for first first term already. You get the first one. You repeat for the rest. You get all this answer. Okay. Then after that, you get the equation already. You substitute the boundary condition, right? The boundary condition. We only look at the first case. We look at, um, let's say we have a rotation one. We don't have rotation two. We don't have vertical displacement. We don't have uh, a verti vertical displacement at one and two. All right. We look at. We will do four assumption. Yeah. What happen if we have rotation only? What happen if we have a uh, displacement only? We will do four assumption later on. I show you the first steps. Yeah. So the first step, you assume that we only have rotation at point one. Uh, rotation angle point one. We just put in one here, and then the rest we don't have, so we put zero zero zero. Let's see what happened to our second equation that we see on the screen here. So, if we don't have rotation two, you cancel rotation two, means m two times rotation two. The moment at point two times rotation two, you can cancel. Those with Vertical displacement one, you can cancel. Those with uh, vertical displacement two, you can cancel. Same with the equation here. V1 minus V2, because V1, V2, zero. Zero times this one, you get zero. You repeat the same, cancel out what you have. So rotation two, you don't have. You cancel the second one. You have rotation one, yeah? Then same with this one, you also cancel. Vertical, zero. And then you cancel the second rotation. Same with the, the last one, because we don't have rotation. All right, this is the first assumption, yeah? first boundary condition that we assume. What happens if we only have one rotation uh, inside the system? So we arrive at a new equation. From the combination of these two, you see that all the red arrow you take out already. We arrive at um, um, a new equation. If you combine, uh, not com if you summarize what you have with the first equation, our uh, first boundary condition here, right? So the first one you have in the equation you have m one rotation one equal to all these blue color remaining equation here. And then you factor out, you cancel out the, all the uh, rotation one in the equation. You arrive at the equation that you see on the left hand side here. And how we write uh, this equation or what this, this equation means. Uh, M one rotation, uh, moment one and there's a, uh, uh, function one there. Function one there means that we have um, rotation equal to one. Right? M one rotation one. So we replace the boundary condition there. So we will get M one equal to this equation. We summarize this equation. We will get M one. When we uh, when our rotation at point one equal to one, yeah, we will have negative W L square divided by twelve. This equation must meet with this boundary condition. And how you get minus W L square divided by twelve is from the two equation on the right hand side here.
you do the same, repeat the same process. For, let's say, we only have rotation number two in our boundary condition. So the rest is zero, zero, zero. Means we don't have rotation one, we don't have vertical displacement, we don't have vertical displacement at point one and two. I, I, I think I show you this, the, the second one and then you can do for the rest. So if you do the same, yeah, you do the same, the stem steps like what we did just now, you cancel here and there. So for moment two, you arrive only at moment two, rotation two, which is you only have this term. You replace with the boundary condition one. You will arrive at this term, like what you see on the screen here, negative L square W divided by four minus L square W divided by three. You will arrive at negative W square divided by 12. So moment at one, we equal to negative W L square divided by 12. Moment two, we equal to negative W L square divided by 12. You do the same, the third boundary condition. This is boundary condition one. You get this one. Boundary condition two, you get this one. Boundary condition three. Boundary condition three, three, you only have vertical displacement and we put vertical displacement as one. You do the same cancellation like what you did just now. You arrived at the third equation. So F1Y, equal to negative L W divided by two. You do the fourth one, boundary condition four, you only have vertical displacement at point two, you are right at the fourth equation for the B. F1, F2, Y, one is because your vertical two is one, equal to negative L W divided by two. So from here, we convert the one on the left to the right by having the boundary condition, the four boundary condition here. We can we can find the value of your moment, local moment one, uh, and the force at the node there. Okay. So if you want to know the derivation of uh, all this value, you can come to these all these slides uh, for today. Okay, just now we already explained how you convert the top diagram to the bottom diagram, how you find all the value there. Yeah, the value there already given in all these small equation here by applying the four bounding condition like what you see on the screen here, yeah? All right, so we start with the general formulation. We will take force equal to KD minus the initial force for distributed load condition, yeah? So we, if you see the curly symbol, it means that we are looking at matrix form already, yeah? So force equal to KD minus F0 means initial force diagram uh, dimension. Force equal to KD. So this is the concentration concentrated nodal forces, like what we learned previously. This is the equivalent nodal force. So we will use Appendix D of the equivalent nodal force F0 in our uh, solution later on. So in the exam, in your coming exam or uh, final exam, eh, um, when you look at when you look when you see distributed loading in the question, straight away go to straight away uh, refer to Appendix D for this section yeah, for this component. All right. So um, now, if you haven't downloaded Appendix D in the Moodle, it is inside here. 
if you go to Moodle, Appendix D, this one, yeah. You download, you need to refer to this diagram, table one, D, this one, yeah. So if you haven't download, download it now. All right. So we have all these uh, information here. All right. So as you can see from table D1, that what you see on the screen here, we have a lot of different scenario. The first one, if you have a focus load on a beam, if you want to find a local force on point one and point two, then you can straight away use this formula for local force at point one here. Moment, if you want to find a local moment, you can use this formula for first scenario. Same with this one, yeah? Same with point two, the local force at point two, you can use this formula if you have the first scenario, focus loading, same with the moment. And how is all this formula works? You have to refer, make sure that your assumption is the same like what you see on the screen here. All the force is going up and your moment is anti-clockwise with the length of L. If your structure do not have L, your structure have different L, maybe your your L is, is quarter L, then you cannot use all this information, all right? All this formula is based on the length of L. Let's say you have a distributed load like what we discussed just now. For uh, case one, two, three, four, the fourth cases, you have both sides uh, inside the wall, with the length of L and distributed load. Let's say the question asks you to find the local uh, node, uh, local node point one force. You can use the formula negative WL divided by two. If you need to find a moment at point one, you refer to table D1, refer to case number four. You can replace M1 equal to negative WL squared divided by 12. Same with point two and point three. Any question how to use this uh, table D1? Any question? Same, eh? we have two pages of uh, table D here. Eh? Okay, no question, I have one question. If you have a distributed load, huh? case number six, we did this one. Uh, lie, this, answer, this question is for you. If you have a case number six, with a distributed load of this profile, what is the moment at point number two? What is the local moment at point number two? Lie, are you there? Oh, yeah. yeah. So if you're having this scenario, this one, if you have a pyramid shape of distributed load, what is the moment, local moment, or moment at point number two?
Okay, next question I'm going to ask Katana. Eh? For life, uh, think about uh, the, the answer. Katana, what is the moment? Look, if you are having a pyramid uh, distributed load, like what you see on the screen here, what is the force, local force, or force at node number one here? What is the force? Point number one. Minus WL over four. Yeah, correct. Live. Live. You, you understand what, what I'm asking? Yes. So what is your answer? Phi U L power square over nine ninety six. Okay, repeat your answer. Phi W Phi time W that L cube over ninety six. You seeing a cube there? Square square square. square. All right, so um, Singi, you understand? Huh? I think you understand. Huh? Singi, you have any question? How to use this table? Yes, I understand. All right, good. Excellent. All right, let's see, back to our class. So the table help you to build this uh, site because uh, uh, we need to build the matrix. Yeah, so inside the beam matrix, we, we know that we have uh, force moment inside here. Same with this one. So the F0 here, we use the help from the table. Yeah. All right. Okay, now we assume that concentrated nodal force is not present where it is here. We assume that in our case, we don't have concentrated load, huh? like what you see on the screen here. On the left hand side, there's no concentration load. So this component equals zero. And we're only solving like what we see on the screen here. So if you rearrange the equation, F equal to KD minus F0, which is equivalent, equivalent not, not the force, we put, we pull this equation to the left hand side, it get positive. So F0 equal to KD. All right, and then you put in all the all the nodal forces and movement inside this matrix form. All right, so we will have F0 equal to F1y, M1, F2y, M2. Okay, we have the first point, second point. So we start with the force moment force moment and if you can't recall all this number refer to table d right because we have a well distributed load you just refer to the table d all right okay then the rest is but if you have all right and then after that once you have the this formula you're able to solve yeah after you have this formula you're able to solve for individual displacement inside the, the structure we will look at one example after a short break yeah we will stop our lecture here for a while let me stop the recording